Okay, so here we are on the home page of the website. I'm going to first show you a little bit about how this nav bar on the left works and then go into the test code and show you how it was tested. I'm logged in as an administrator here, so I'm going to be able to see the add page and manage users. Uh, I'm going to go over here and add a new page, uh, title how to test Angular services don't have a YouTube link yet. It'll be posted once this video is done. Description, testing Angular services with Jasmine. Right. Oh, I need that. Okay. So I'm just going to enter something that I know won't work for now. But as you can see, this how to test Angular services automatically appeared on the left in the navbar. And that's because the navbar is a subscriber to the page manager service. And whenever the list of pages changes with an edit, add, or delete, and by an edit, you can actually go into the page as an administrator and add it, edit it, and delete it. Whenever a change happens, the page manager notifies all of the subscribed observers. So now going to the code over here, page manager. All right, so there are a bunch of functions in here, add page, delete page, edit page. Um, but what we're, what we're interested in right now is this add page function. It uses an HTTP request and pushes the new page to the server. And then on success, the, the subscribers are notified and then the response is returned. So if I come over here to my services tests, you can see um, in the test I set up my services and I'm unit testing services and this specific one is for the page manager. This HTTP request here is using Ajax and what I'm doing is I'm going to override that and mock it out. So I'm accepting the page manager service and also the HTTP backend. Um, then right here you can see that I have a test for the page manager. It should notify observers when an ad page, ad page is successfully called. So I set up a little dummy function here and I spy on it. So I'm looking at it to make sure that it's called and I register this dummy function with the service. And then I say, when I get an HTTP re post request to content, which is what that function does, respond with a 200. And then I actually call the add page. And I say HTTP backend, which is my mock. I say flush, so it goes out and does the mock request and sends back the response. And I say, I expect that the callback was called since I was a subscriber. Now I also have another test here that says it should not notify the observers when add page returns an error. So in this one, I actually respond with a 500 code and then the callback should not have been called. So if I come over here to my comma configuration in IntelliJ, I can run these tests and I actually have a bunch of other ones right now, but the ones we're interested in are these two service ones here. And as you can see, they were successful. Uh, on that nav controller, these two only show up, the add page and the manage users, if you are an admin user. So if I log out here, they disappear. So I'm going to show you how to write those tests. So the last time I was using, I just ran the tests inside of IntelliJ, but there's also a way for Karma to be run continuously so when you make a change to a file it reruns the tests and I usually have this open on my second monitor so I can just watch it and see my tests fail or pass right away. So what I want to do here is this was the page manager services tests. I'm going to copy this setup stuff and paste it down here and we actually want to test the authentication service now. Alright, 
So before each of the methods inside this, I am accepting the authentication service and again the HTTP backend, storing that service in a variable. Now I have the two things that I need there and I'm ready to write a test. So the authentication service, when a user logs in or logs out, then the subscribers should be notified with their callback. All right, so we're ready to write a test for the authentication service. What we want to do is it, the authentication service, should notify observers when a user logs out. So what we want to do here is create a callback test method so that we can subscribe to the authentication service with it. Accept the user. There we go. And then I want to spy on that method. So this is a Jasmine function here. Spy on the callback test object and the method that I'm spying on is callback and then on the service I want to register as a user change callback with that method that I'm spying on and then service dot logout so I'm logging out of the current user and then I want to expect that the method that I subscribed with was called to have been called. And that should pass. Now if I go back over to my tests, see that they all pass, but I need to make sure that it didn't pass for the wrong reason, so I'm going to say no, it should not have been called, even though it definitely should have. So I'm getting a failing test here says that the spy should have been called but it wasn't and I change it back once more and it succeeds. Um, let's for good measure write another one for the user logging in uh, when I actually have to mock out the HTTP backend it should notify observers when a user logs in. So I'm doing the same thing here. Copy those lines, put them in. Um, but this time I am going to log in. And I need an email and a password. And this time I need to mock out the HTTP backend. So this is a post request. So I'm a, when I get a post to the server URL of user, so that's the path to the user login, then respond with a 200. That should do it, um, but I'm having a failing test here. So I actually forgot a small little thing here. I need to accept that request, flush the HTTP, and now it succeeds. So before I flushed that, it was not resolving the response and now that I do it passes. And if I say not have been called this should fail. Good. Again take that back and it passes. Now when the user does not log in successfully then I don't want to notify the users or the observers that the user has changed.
So again, setting up this stuff. And later I should really clean these up. I have a lot of duplicate code here. But for now, I'm going to keep it in. So now I want to respond with 500. This should fail. Yep. Because when I get a failure on the login, then it actually does not notify the observers. And now it succeeds. 